If you came here yesterday, you wouldn't have a place to stand. It was a chaotic and a dangerous scene that looked like a war zone. Policemen were firing at innocent protesters and their simple crime was that they demanded that this footbridge that has become a white elephant becomes useful for commuters to prevent the needless death. And this was triggered by the death of an innocent young girl of the West Africa Senior High School, which is just across from this busy and 60 meter wide highway that connects Accra to Eburi. Today, we will talk to residents who live in this area, shop owners who want speed ramps constructed in the interim to prevent needless deaths. Well, City News almost preempted the tragic accident that happened here yesterday with a campaign launch on the City Breakfast Show. The intent was simple, make sure the Adenta footbridges are fixed. This footbridge that has become a white elephant has been remaining in the same posture um, over the past years without it being fixed. It has resulted yesterday in the death of one student and the resultant protestation by commuters and residents who live in this very community. And yesterday, we broke the news for you here with uh, two reporters who brought us up to speed on developments. And today, we deployed City News' Anne Shelley Zhu, who has been following proceedings here so far. Uh, Anne Shelley, you're welcome to City Newsroom. So you've been here since morning. The assignment from the police, looking at the statement, was that they were going to deploy men to the scene to ensure that there is protection for people who are crossing. What have you seen so far? Today when I came, I came here from 7, 7.30. There was heavy police presence around here. They were, they were here in their numbers and they were directing pedestrians and school children to cross the road safely. And what have they been saying to you, the police, if they so spoke at all? I spoke to the head of traffic at um, the MTTD. Uh, and he said that they are going to run a shift with their personnel from morning to afternoon, from afternoon to evening, and then evening to late in the evening. Do you get the sense that there's agitation generally from people who live along these areas? There, there is. Yesterday the, 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 the incident happened and then today is a fresh day. You would probably think that because the presence of the police is here, residents will be calm, but no. They are not satisfied even with the presence of the police. They are really angry. They are really, really agitated. Thank you very much. And Shelly Zewu there uh, reporting for City Newsroom. So this is a 360 coverage that we are bringing you on City Newsroom, on City TV here on the busy Adenta Eburi. Uh, Medina a Highway here in Accra. All right, so the accident happened in the full glare of everybody who was here because it happened in the afternoon. There was a lot of activity ongoing when the accident occurred. And residents and commuters here tell us the lady was left lying for many minutes. We were told over 20 minutes before the police were called. So I moved in to talk to one of the shop attendants here. And this gentleman has a wood shop. Sir, good afternoon and welcome to City Newsroom. Thank you. What's welcome. your name? My name is called Nixon Ufusu. Were you here yesterday? I was here. What did you see? Um, around uh, 4 p.m. when this thing happened, the lady was just crossing the road. Then suddenly the, just, the car just knocked her down. In fact, she was lying there for the past 20 minutes and there was nobody there to pick her up. We went in and called the police. The police came in and they were even still, still standing. There did, was nobody. Did you see the body or something? Yes, I, think that I, have, I have evidence here that shows that the lady was lying there. You can see it for yourself. That's this, yes, I can see that. Yes, she was lying there for the next 20, 30 minutes. And she was briefing and nobody was able to pick her up. Why, but, but how about you, the residents? Were we, you able to move here from every, the fact, Everybody was shocked about what happened. So we were trying to do that, maybe we pick up something. All the cars, if you can if you even see, mm. there's a car standing by. Mm, mm. But the, nobody is willing to pick because of the blood. Nobody is willing to pick the lady up. Which police did you go to call? We went to the Adenta police station. They went and called them and they came in. They bought this, I think this van or something, mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. they pick her up. But then they were doing something at the police station, I think. Um, it's a Ghana card or something. So there were a lot of people in there. So when we they, they told the police, I don't know what happened before the delay or... This your wood shop is located right under this footbridge. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, how, is it a frequent thing for you it's, to see even, accidents? This week, this particular week, this thing has happened for the past, I think, three or four people had died on this particular road, this particular week. What do you think should happen? So the footbridge is cutting across the highway, but you cannot climb at all. What do you think should happen? Yes, I think they have to fix it. People have been talking about this uh, feedback for the past time that they have to fix it. But me, what I know is that for the short term measure, they should do a ramp. 
that will be the short term measure. A ramp. Uh, speed ramp. Speed ramps should be here. Because you look at the, the traffic lights. Because the drivers want to beat the traffic light, that's mm. why they run faster here. Mm. Immediately they get here, they look at the traffic light, maybe it's green. So they want to beat it fast. So we see them running faster. But before they get there, the light is on. Mm. The yellow and the red mm. is on. Mm. That's what is happening here. Did you take part in the blocking of the road yesterday? No, I wasn't part, but I was here. You know, the guys around, it's not their fault. But what happened is something that they, they were all, in fact, it, it shocked them. So they have to act on this. Like showing this picture to you. Mm. Immediately it happened, there was nothing happening. So that's what I have to do. In the past three or four weeks, this has happened. About five or six people have died on this road. So that's what happened. Those the youth around just got angry and then they just broke out. The road blocking didn't start at once. Mm. They started it gradually. One put a tie there and then they were doing, still the police, nobody was doing anything. And they start bringing it. This one bringing, bringing it and then it start making big guys. What do you make of how the police handled the situation? The police did well in the first place because they came in slowly. They didn't act uh, faster. And at the end of the day, I saw the police again uh, fighting the, 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 the youth, which was very bad. They should have talked to them. Thank you very much for speaking to us. You're welcome. So it's a day after the accident and we have come here to sample views. So this gentleman I just spoke to is, uh, owns a wood shop. Uh, I will attempt to speak to a few more people. Uh, sir, you also were here yesterday. What do you do? He was the evening one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what's your name? If you can yeah, come. Yeah. I'm a, uh, Nanayao. You're Nanayao? Yeah. What's, uh, what do you do here? Oh, I sell, I used to sell shoes here. You sell shoes here. Were you here yesterday? Yeah. What I did you see? Here. Yeah, I saw when the car knocked down the girl. I was here. I went to the police station and called the police people should come and uh, take the girl. How far is the police station from here? Oh, it's about 100 meters to the police station. And when you went, who did you meet? Yeah, they didn't come early. I saw one, uh, one policeman and he, he came here with moto. When he came, he, just, he came and... When he saw the girl and he just left, and later they came here, they, they said they don't have uh, rubber gloves to take the girl. That's what the police told Yeah, this is what they said. So they, they went back. Later they came with uh, a van to come and, and take the girl. At the time, was she dead? Yes, she was there. The girl was, she, was she dead? She died instantly? Yes, she died instantly. So when the police people come and the boys was burning the ties here because we are stopping the cars so that we can take care of them and they said they will not they, no car was able to stop and we decided that yeah the person is down and then you people should help so that we take care of the girl and they said no my brother when you are here you, you i don't i don't think you you, you it, it's not easy at all it's not easy at all the girl, a young girl like that, and the car will knock her down like that. It, it, it's bad. It's Thank not you. fine. Thank you very much. Uh, so there are more views there about what happened here yesterday. People actually were witnesses, several witnesses to this accident. And the narrative is almost similar. The young lady who had just crossed from the West Africa Senior High School, just across from here, uh, came through and was knocked down. And countless calls made to the police proved futile. The police, they said, this gentleman I just spoke to said, he personally walked to the police station and it took more than 20 minutes uh, before the police could come in. Of course, ambulance service was not even invited because naturally the police station, which was close by, was what was adopted. So it's a busy afternoon here. The police MTTD are doing a yeoman's job helping some of the school children cross. But there are others who are crossing unaided. Now, I have just seen some school children from the WAS Experimental Basic School. It's a government school. They have just successfully crossed this busy and dangerous highway. Let me just see if I can pick a word or two from them. Hello, what are your names? Please, my name is Goswe. And your name is? Famous Chokoto. And you are? Rich Mondo. Famous. Okay, what's your school? It's WAS Experimental, right? Yes. yes. And you are in class what? Four. four. All of you? Four. four. In class four. Okay. How long have you been attending this school for? It's this year. You started this year? How about you? 2016. 2016, that's two years ago. How it's many years? Two years. Two years ago. How has it been for you crossing this road every day to school? If I'm crossing, I'll be scared that the car will hit me. Have you seen anybody being hit here before? Yes. When? Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah. No. When? Like three days ago. 
three days. You were, oh, tell me what happened, what did you see? The car hit the girl and his one leg is aside. And one, the head too is aside. How did you feel? I feel scared. I was scared. Do you feel like you should stop going to school because of this? Or you think something else should be done? Yes, I think that I should stop going to school. What do your teachers say and what are your parents thinking about this? They say we should find another school for me. So we should stop coming to Iwas Experimental. What story do you have? Have you seen anybody being knocked down yourself? Yes. When? Yesterday. The girl who was killed here yesterday, you were here? Yes. Tell me what you saw. Yes, I saw that the time she was coming to, she was as if she was crossing. Then the car to met her. Then the time she, she fell down. No one wasn't able to pick her up fast. So the time the car walked on her before, then they started coming to pick her up. Then after that, they bent the ties before the policeman was okay. How did it make you feel when you saw what happened yesterday? I was so sad of the girl, so I wanted to tell the police that they should help us. And always they should be here, so when you want to cross the road, we can get a better chance to cross. Give me your name again. Famous. Famous. How many years have you been attending this school for? This year. This year. You cross this road every day? Yes. Who helps you to cross? My brother. Your brother. Without your brother, can you cross? No. So without your brother, you will not go to school? Yes. Have you seen anybody being knocked before on this road? Yes. When? Yesterday. Tell me what you saw. When the girl was crossing and the car hit the girl. I was too sad. What happened? When you went home, did you tell your parents what you saw? Yes. What did they say? They say they'll find another school for me. How do I see if I'm crossing the road every day? Something can happen to me. When you slept last night, did you see what happened here yesterday in your dream? Or did you think about it? Yes. Tell me what happened. How did you feel sleeping last night? You just feel well. And when you woke up this morning, did you feel like going to school again? No. So that is a sad story here. School children <laughs> are affected. A school girl died here yesterday. So naturally, you would expect the difficulty that these children have to go through having to cross this busy and dangerous highway every morning and every afternoon to and from school. So it's a, it's a swift development here. The, like I said, the police led by the Inspector General of Police, no mean a man, has come here to inspect the situation here and possibly assess the situation for possible advice to the authorities that be. So I've just caught up with him for a brief comment. IGP, uh, you're welcome to City Newsroom. At what do we owe you this grand visit? Well, Mario, thank you for the opportunity. As you may be aware, yesterday there was an incident here. A lot of step and solution. Total chaos. And the cause of it was that somebody was uh, killed by a bear. So this fatal accident resulted in the people protesting violently here. The police had to come to ensure law and order. They did attack the police. And we, as, as usual, maintain our code and ensure that uh, law and order prevail. Today I'm here to come and then assess the situation. And as you can see, today there's a free flow of uh, traffic, traffic, and our auto traffic officers are also here to enable this free flow and also direct the, the district. Mm. I believe yesterday was a climax for what we are seeing today. And you also talk about maintaining law and order here. There have been talk about policemen shooting indiscriminately yesterday. And for many, crowd control is a challenge. I know that's a professional way you have to handle these issues. I am not aware of any police officer shooting anybody yesterday. If you are, you may, you may have to give this information to the police so that we can do this investigation and get you. We are looking forward to any person who will come to tell us where that, uh, that person who was shot at is and uh, this or her address because it is very important that we do this investigation. Thank you very much IGP for speaking to us.
the Inspector General of Police there, uh, Mr. Santi Epietu, speaking to us there. And it is an interesting development here. The IGP himself, to be on the ground, is not unusual. It's not a usual thing to see. And so we keep an eye on the developments here and bring you more. It's a solemn atmosphere here. Yesterday, young Kasim left this house and she was going to school. The plan was to go to school and return home on her own. Sadly, she had had to be returned home this morning, or rather this afternoon, by the ambulance behind me. A sad incident that occurred and which has left a whole community in mourning. You can see in the background people who are sitting here solemnly and the adua would be done shortly before the burial through Islamic rituals would be carried out a little later on. But I've caught up uh, with the uncle of late Mariam now and let me just speak to him. Sir, our condolences. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. And um, how did the news reach the family home? Uh, yesterday um, around about 5 p.m. we had an information I was in the room and then I, I got called out that uh, she was involved she was hit by a car at the on the uh, Adenta highway so we started you know trying to look out for her so before we get there we got the information that you know she passed away so we were informed to go to the Adenta police station. So we went there and then um, the police instructed us that the body has already been sent to the mock. That we should come this morning. And then this morning too, we went there. We went there and then all the necessary formalities, you know, was, was done. And then we took, uh, we went to the court with the, uh, the driver and then we had an authorization from the judge we went to the mortuary and then luckily for us with the influence of honorable boniface everything was easy for us and that's how everything you know to cut in shorts mm. that's how every everything went about and luckily for us she's here and we are preparing to do the tradition so you, you lay her to rest today? Yes, yeah, sure. Tell us who young Mariam was. <laughs> young Mariam, all I can say is uh, she's a very, very visionable young girl. She's a girl that, uh, honestly speaking, whenever I see her, I see a big dream. So, man proposes God disposes the dream has totally been shut down but that's God's work and we accept it and we give thanks and praises to him do you blame anybody for her death um, we are Muslims and as a Muslim we believe in whatever decision God takes on us we don't own ourselves we don't decide for ourselves but as uh, you can see everybody keeps complaining that government has to we are praying that Mariam's death should be, uh, you know, should be a, a, a grand path for the situation to end. When everybody is calling for government to set up the footbridge on the Adenta Road, I think government should try to come in and then do it. We, can, we cannot say we, we blame anybody, but sometimes God does things for his own good reasons. Thank you and our condolences. It's my pleasure. In region, as we say in the Muslim uh, religion. So it's a solemn atmosphere, like I said. And uh, uh, you've just heard the uncle there, distraught family it is. And many people, community members, have come around to uh, commiserate with the family. And indeed, a member of parliament for the area who was mentioned uh, by the uncle there, uh, also Minister of State, Alhaji Abubakar Boniface Sadiq, uh, is also in the house. Let me just walk over and speak to him briefly. Honorable, yeah. uh, condolences. Uh, it's your constituent that you've lost. Yeah. Is this a family that you know? Is this a home you've come to before? No, it's a family I know. And they are my friends. We are f family friends. And it's rather unfortunate that this uh, incident has occurred. But it's God who knows best. Uh, we have been in the forefront fighting for the uh, completion of the bridges. Finally, it's okay to us. 
But all we have to see is that this is a, a child who had gone just to register. She's on the gold sector uh, group. And she went and registered just to cross the road and come home. Mm -hmm. Then she met her, her untimely death. There are people yeah. who hold the view that, of yeah. course, God has his own ways, yeah. but again, yeah. uh, it was also the fault of human that we saw what we yeah. saw yesterday. Yeah. So people would say that the politicians should take the blame. Uh, yeah, we agree in a way, but uh, this is something that has happened. And yeah, I have the IGP here. We are still being joined, and it's actually a very a developing story. Yes. It is on City News, Room and City TV. The uh, Minister for Roads and Highways. Yeah, Roads and Highways is yeah. here. So Minister for Transport is here. Yeah. The IGP is here. Indeed. And uh, the, let me just say that many people are pouring into the home. Uh, it's a yeah. solemn atmosphere. Yeah. People who have come IGP, here to commiserate. Yeah. Uh, and the IGP uh, yeah. Inspector General appear to is also here with yes. us. Uh, Honorable, you're making the point yeah. about about how you believe that this situation should be fixed. Yeah, I mean, this issue since we came, we have taken the issue up. But sometimes when you are explaining to public, they don't seem to understand this because this has been a standing contract. And immediately you come, we have an issue with the contractor. The whole matter is about 10 years mm. old now. Mm. And so there has been a lot of accumulation of debt. And the, the government, the minister is here, he will attest to that fact. Okay. Government has gone into discussions with the, the contractor who has agreed to come to site. Mm. And we owe the contractor okay. 80 million uh, uh, Ghana cities and 40 million dollars. So it's at a finance the, issue. Yes, yeah, it's a finance issue. But okay. at the end of the day, there has been a consensus between government and the contractor. The contractor has agreed to come on site. So but me, there's new development mm. where the minister and the contractor have come to agreement. He's, the minister is coming with new contractors mm. all together mm. to get it done. So let me speak to the minister yeah. now. Honorable Minister, uh, we are grateful that you have agreed to speak to us and thankful that you have also come to this home. Now, uh, must we or should we have waited till what happened yesterday sh happened before we saw or see what we are seeing now, the swift action by government? You see, this is the unfortunate impression. This is the unfortunate impression that a lot of people have in this country. Okay? There is nothing like government has waited to see what has happened. Mm? Government is working on daily basis. People are not privy to what had happened for the past months. These food bridges oh, have coming. been there for I'm 10 coming. years. Yes, it has been there for 10 years. But this is not the time, you know, to talk about the history of the bridges, what is being done. You know, we are restraining ourselves not to talk about those things now. The most important thing, what people want to hear now is how are we going to fix the bridges at the appropriate time, the history and what has been done over the past months will be made known to the people of this country. At the moment, I don't believe in long speeches. I don't believe in any blame game. game. What I am interested, what the government is interested in now is what measures are we putting in place as we have started already you know, we have to even intensify them to get the bridges res uh, fixed. So when would we you know, see these bridges fixed? This is what I'm saying that arrangements and preparation towards the fixing of this bridge had been taking place for the past months. It's only unfortunate and regrettable that, you know, you may call it a coincidence that one or two people are being knocked down. So steps being taken, you know, are not being taken because of the recent opportunity. So when will we see the bridges? Yes, that is what I'm telling you. It's on. If this is not not happening within a within a week, because contractors going to work on these foot bridges, you know, had already been selected. They have been uh, spoken to. Funds are being made available. We have even gone through the processes. So we don't of, have a of, timeline of, yet, of, do we, of, of, of when the completion would be? No, within the next. Three months, maximum four months by the end of February next year, all these bridges will be in place. That tells you that if within a week, any time from Monday, Tuesday, you see 
the contractors who have already right. been selected right. coming on 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 on, on site. Thank that you should very much. tell Ghanaians that we are not doing it because of what has happened. Thank Otherwise, you. we couldn't have put these arrangements in place. Thank you, it Minister. Has been going on already. Thank you, Minister for Road and Highways. Let and me get a that, word. Yes. Sorry. And apart from that, let me assure Ghanaians and the public that we are taking measures in conjunction with the 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 transport ministry you know and 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 whose purview road safety you know is operating mm -hmm. and of course with the police you, you know who will ensure safety we are providing all kinds of safety measures including speed ramps now okay. including uh, other road furniture you know, like crash barriers, okay. New Jersey barriers, you know, uh, safety fences, you know, at least for the time being, okay. in connection with the police to ensure... Thank you very safety. much. Minister there for Roads and Highways, and he's also accompanied by the Minister for Transport. Honorable, you have a comment or two? Yes, today. I do. Uh, let me, on behalf of government, express our most sincere sympathy to the lost, to the family of the lost ones. It's unfortunate that if you lost these people during this crucial time of our development. But let me appeal to you through your medium. I think the Minister for Roads and Highways has spoken about the infrastructure arrangement that he's making. But please, let me also appeal to you through your medium that, the, that road safety is a shared responsibility. So going forward, going forward, let all of us be part of educating our people about the safety that we need to Put in place. Honourable well, Minister, who should take the blame for the death of young Mariam? I, like the, the Minister for Roads and Highways just said something to you. That the issue of blame, whether it is A or B, to me that is not the most important thing now. The most important, unfortunately, we've lost such a young, burdened person. And that is, should be our concern. That is unfortunate that we've lost him. We've lost over I, 100, I mean, there were over 100 accidents. The unofficial figure is 195 from the community members. We sat and watched until what happened I yesterday that, happened. I think that, please, it is unfortunate that we've lost such a person. It's unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. But the figures that have been peddling around to, I don't know whether we can also authenticate it to find out whether it is true. Because the official figures from the police is also pointing contrary to what they figured. Do you have the official figures from the police? Yeah, but I'm coming. This is not a time for us, like I said. Let's, let's find a way to calm down our people. Let's find a way to educate our people the way we should take good care of ourselves. For me, that is the most important thing now. And through you, and including you, and I'm appealing it through your medium, that let's take the safety of our life into our own destiny. Okay. For me, that's the most important. Thank you for speaking Thank to you. us. That's the Minister for Transport there. So, uh, it's a, uh, you can call it a trial of ministers. The minister at the office of the vice president, uh, of course, flanked by the Minister for Transport and the Minister for Roads and Highways. Of course, the Inspector General of Police is also here. They have all come to commiserate with the family. And you can hear uh, some kind of uh, wailing in the background and also something that sounds like a protest station and uh, this gentleman clearly doesn't sound uh, what, 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 what is what is your problem I'm worried. You're she's worried. my sister what is the problem because of the government official I would have spoiled her wallah she's my only sister why 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 would you spoil who would I talk to now when I'm sad I used to call her talk to her now who would I call what do you think the government officials should have done that they did not do? They cannot do anything since they can't bring their life back. What can they do? Clearly unhappy uh, people here. Of course, you would know that yesterday after the, the, the death of the student, uh, there was a massive protest, a spontaneous protest. And uh, it, is, it is widespread in the community. Uh, more people are not happy. And of course, you can hear some protestations in the background. But still sampling views and picking the views and thoughts of people here. It is indeed a solemn atmosphere as they prepare to lay to rest young Mariam. The unofficial uh, statistics put together by residents here put the figure and the number of deaths to close to 200. And this has happened over the period of one year. I've actually uh, run into a family member of one of the victims claimed uh, by this particular road. And that's Nick Asante. Nick, you're welcome. Uh, to the city newsroom. So you lost your brother here, we are told. Yes. When? 31st July. 31st July. What was his name? Julius Michael. Julius Michael. 
tell me about what happened on that day. Um, so, at around 7, 7.15, I got a call. In the morning? In the evening, actually. So my office is just down here. So I got a call that um, my brother has left his phone in a taxi, so I should come to the Legon Hospital. And I was like, no, that story is not... So doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. And the person said, you just come, you just come. So I drove straight to the Legon Hospital. When I got there, my brother was lying there dead. And then I was, I asked, so how? And then I was told, oh, he was crossing the road. He had, my mom lives down here, so he had gone to, live, to visit. He was crossing the road back and then he died. How did this strike you when you got to the hospital and saw the lifeless body of your, of your brother? It was, it was crazy. Even up to now, it's still tough, you know, because we didn't get to talk to him to know at least if maybe there was, a, there was an injury or something and then later we go to the hospital to talk to him even before that. At least you get an idea of what actually happened. But in this case, I'm told when the car hit him, he didn't say a word. He just, just like that. So, when he was rushed to the hospital, that was it. Did you at least get to see the person who knocked him down? Yes, we, 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 we've been going to court since. You went to court? Yeah, Why, was, yeah. he, was the man arrested? Was the driver arrested? He reported himself to the Adenta police station. So we've been going to court. <coughs> the issue is that <coughs> the police station says that there are a lot of people who have died on this road whose dockets are being prepared. So even after that, we got, we've been to court three times. My brother's docket are still not, are still not done. And what exactly is supposed to happen in court? Well, you see, it's actually between him and the state. You know, they say motor accidents like this, it's, it's actually between the, the, the offender and the state. But for us as a family, we want to see, we want to witness proceedings and we want to know what goes on. So I go there to, to be sure of what's happening. You've since buried your brother, I believe. Yes, we have. We've been buried. What, vo what void has he left in your family? We were just two boys. It's just me and him. He was so he was younger? Yes, he's my younger brother. He's 32 or 35. I know this, this, this is him. So Julius Michael Okreku, a.k.a. Opolo. So it's been tough. My mom, I'm sure you know how this is. It's, it's difficult. How is she holding up, your mom? She's broken, you know. Charlie, even me as a man, there's not one single night I don't dream about. It. It's like it's, it's almost always on my mind. You grow up with somebody, sleep on the same bed, eat from the same bowl, you wear the same things. Because we grew up, you see that we grew up together, so same body size and all. So you are together, and then suddenly. Unexpected things. I'm sure you know that mm. it's, it's tough. On mm. Mm. It's tough on the whole family, the other cousins, and everybody. It's been really, really tough. So when you hear stories about what happened here yesterday, where the innocent student of uh, was was killed, and the resultant protests, how do you feel? First of all, I feel sad for the family who have lost the, the student because I know what I am going through, and I know what my family has gone through because of the loss of my brother. So I know it's very tough for such a, a family. And it, it's, it's sad that we have to keep losing people like that. You know, between last Friday and today, we've lost four people. Just last Friday and today. So if you even want to do a rough calculation, if every week we lose two people, put it together. You understand? So we've been, we lose people all the time. It's just unfortunate that even the numbers, I'm sure you know it's unofficial. Because mm. sometimes accidents, people just think they're people who die later. Yeah. Things, you know, all kinds of things happen. So people are really, really suffering on this road. So when I heard about yesterday, about the, the death, I felt bad about it. But when I heard about the, the, the protest, the protest, I said, this is not surprising because People here are angry. I am angry because you see, this this thing was done when 2008 or so, mm, mm. and it hasn't been touched again. 
after my brother died, the assemblymen and a few other people, we've been going on radio stations, TV stations to talk about this. But we haven't gotten any attention. So it looks like yesterday's incident seemed to be the, the, the kind of event needed to get the attention of politicians. It's unfortunate we had to get to that point. But you see, we are all human beings here. If a politician falls sick or he gets into an accident right now, he's airlifted. But almost 200 people die on the road, and it doesn't seem to be news. It had to actually take... I can tell you that it wouldn't have been big news until the incident of the protest happened. Until the protest, it still wasn't news. It wasn't news. You know, but those who are dying, they come from families. Did your brother leave behind a wife and children, maybe? He left behind a, a, a pregnant woman. Sad. How is she taking it? I'm telling you, this is tough for everyone. And you see, it's unexpected. See, so, it's not like you've planned for it. So think of the financial toll, think of the, the emotional toll for me, her, my mom, the whole family, his friends. He was popular in this area, you know, so it, was, it became like an area funeral. You should have seen the, the, the day of the funeral. It was done just down here. The place was full. A lot of people were here to commiserate. And it's also because a lot of people saw that as a, as a protest. Like, this is what we're going through. We expect our politicians to come around and help. They pass when they're passing, they, they go with sirens, and then they go. They, when there's traffic here, they don't join it. When there's a problem here, a politician will pass. Nick, we are sorry. Our condolences uh, to you and your family. Thank you. So that's the story of Nick, uh, brother to Julius Michael Okriku, a.k.a. Opolo. Only 32 years, was killed by a driver, a speeding vehicle on this busy Adenta Madina Highway. And the reason is that this footbridge has been here for close to 10 years. It's incomplete. That's a simple story. There are several others who have lost their lives or have been maimed on this particular road due to the carelessness of the authorities that be.